Traditional sweet recipes from Malta Volume 2 soon available at www.traditionalmaltysweets.com Traditional sweet recipes, creating a small size of Malta that feels like home. Merhaba l-episodju i ħor ta' Maltis Dewnanda. Jena Marlin Xikluna, insel milkom. Unru ingrazzjakom li għet terġaw tina' dumana għal dan il-program bi produzzjoni mil-belt ta' Melbourne. Il-program ta' l-lum ser la' għana ma' zewċ personalitajiet fil-qasam ta' l-spettaklu fl-Australia. Il-violinista Sarah Buzuttil u l-kantaw tur u muziċista Steven Zammit. Infatti nibdaw min Steven Zammit li għal snin gbar fil-snin t-menin kien idolu għal tant segwaċi tal-program televiziv Young Talent Time. Stephen Zammit, a heartthrob in the 70s and 80s. Were say that. <laughs> a heartthrob in the 70s and 80s, thanks to Young Talent Time. It, it was more during the actual 70s. Well, 70s, but, okay. But, but such words like heartthrob, <laughs> I really don't connect with that. Okay, maybe uh, you connect know. more with back then. They considered you to be one of Australia's fastest rising stars. Yeah. yeah. Uh, look, I, th I think when you're actually in the moment of it all, you don't have an understanding of what is actually going on. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I was told that I was going to be a young talent team member, I do remember it quite vividly. It was a Friday and it was about half past four, five o'clock in the afternoon. And I was told alongside Karen Knowles, who was my partner on the show, that we were the new team members. And my immediate thought was not, oh, wow, this is a great opportunity. My immediate thought was, I'm not going to go home early tonight. <laughs> and I've never been home early since. And that, and that is the truth. And it was a very full-on schedule, if you like. Quite a few people don't know, you know, that, that we actually prepared a live show mm -hmm. in a week, which is quite remarkable. And so Monday through to Friday was taken up with rehearsals and, and recording sessions. Yep. And then Saturday from say nine o'clock in the morning, we were at the television studio and through the whole day that consisted of dress rehearsals, pre-records of any group numbers that we had to mm -hmm. do. And then we went live to wear at half past six. And so for that six year period, that's all I did. Did you always want it to be in the entertainment industry? Because if I'm not mistaken, mm -hmm. you wanted to be a hairdresser. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing your research. <laughs> well, back then you had nice hair as well. <laughs> yeah, well, I choose not to have any hair now. Right, it's by choice. <laughs> it's just too much trouble. <laughs> Um, it was high maintenance back then, it was the 70s. Mm -hmm. It's not that I wanted to be a hairdresser. I, I, I certainly knew from a very early age what I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. I always knew that I wanted to sing. Don't ask me why. Uh, I, I don't know why. It's just that I knew very, very early that I wanted to sing. And when I was younger, I wanted to be anything, you know, from a train driver to a bus driver to a hairdresser. As we all to, do. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, so it, it wasn't specifically I want to be a hairdresser. Mm -hmm. It was something that certainly crossed my mind, if you like. Now, as a young TV star, you lived your life under the spotlight, really from the age of 10 to the age of 18. That must have impacted your childhood big time. Yes, it did. When yeah. it comes to family, school, yes, work, etc. Yeah. yeah, it did. You know, I, I often think that it's a trade-off, isn't it, mm. really? For, for everything that you do, or rather, for everything that you choose to do, it's a trade-off, and it is. I, you know, 
I never went on a school camp or anything of that nature. But in saying that, uh, we went on tour. There was the Sydney Opera House, there were Lear Jets, there were limousines, there were the best hotels, there were press conferences, there was security, so it's a trade-off. It was the limelight. It was the limelight, you know. And, 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 you know, this is what I can't understand about today's, you know, high-profile high people who, who complain about paparazzi and whatnot. You're in the public eye. This is what you chose to do. Mm -hmm. you, you are essentially public property, whether you like it or not. Everything, everything is a trade-off. It did impact my life yeah. in many ways. Some good, some not so good. But again, it's a trade-off. Well, again, as you said, in the tabloids, we're going to have the good, the bad and the ugly. And mm -hmm. really, you lived your teenage lives um, live, um, as I said, under the spotlight and in the tabloids. You even had fans um, one year mourn your death because you were <laughs> because you were in a traffic accident. So yes. looking back to, you know, now to that time, how do you see yourself that you dealt with it? I certainly see myself as a survivor. Mm -hmm. uh, I do suffer from anxiety and I do suffer from depression. Mm -hmm. The upbringing that I've had, I'm very grateful for. Yeah. I've always known love and I think that if you've known love and if you continue to know love, then certainly you'll be able to get through each day. Exactly, you know? exactly. So, yeah. so um, you, you mentioned Karen Knowles before and you started together on Young Talent Time mm -hmm. and you really left the show together as well. Yes, we did, yeah. Um, so what happened after Young Talent Time? People go their own way. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's essentially what happened. So what did you do? I suppose I came to terms that I wasn't going to be what I was dreaming that I could be, mm -hmm. if you like. And so I quickly started, if you like, carving a niche. More behind the scenes, mm -hmm. if you like, with songwriting, right. co-producing with a, with a very dear mutual friend of ours, Mr. Michael Zamet. Of How course. are you, Michael? Michael Aziffa. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and teaching. And this is where we are today. Um, right. uh, you teach voice. I, I lost um, voice. Tell us more about what you do. I teach voice, I teach music theory, mm -hmm. songwriting. It's fair to say that there is music in my life every day. Definitely. So, yeah. And you still perform. Yes, I do. Yes. Yeah. But more so, as they say, more so under the radar. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You know? When you see today's uh, generation compared to your generation, when it comes to um, the entertainment industry and putting themselves out there? I think without sounding like I'm whining, if you like, um, I certainly wouldn't want to be trying to make it in this industry in today's day and age. Mm -hmm. I think there are many, many talented individuals that unfortunately will never see the light. I think it's more so be because artists are a lot more expendable today, mm. you know. Uh, and with downloading and whatnot, you know, it's very difficult in this technological age. Unfortunately, this industry at the moment is going through artists a lot faster than compared to back in the 70s, yeah. back in the 80s and the 90s, if you like. But that's life, isn't it? Uh, yeah. That's something of an opportunity that you're giving to your students, actually, on um, uh, your show on Channel 31 called A Night in the Voice Studio. Yeah. Tell us more about that and what was well, that, the aim of it. That was simply just an avenue to give people that I teach and other performers that I know of mm -hmm. and uh, the opportunity to perform in a television environment. It's not being done for any commercial gain or anything of that nature, but it's just more about giving these people that opportunity mm -hmm. to perform in that environment, an environment that I truly feel quite comfortable in. Uh, well, having, you were brought up in it. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, if I can give that opportunity to other people, why not? And you, you know? certainly are. Yeah. 
Tell us more about your family's migration story, because I know you were born here, mm -hmm. but who came from Malta? <laughs> my nana and my nanmu uh -huh. came from Malta. My nanmu came from Shalkia, which I think is in Gojo. It is. And my nana came from Masha Slok. Mm -hmm. uh, and the family settled in Masha Slok. And my nanmu was known as Tony Tapolizia. Mm -hmm. So he was the policeman there for, I think, about 42 years. Right. And then in the early 50s, in the very, very early 50s, my nanmu came over here with uh, two of his sons, mm -hmm. which included my father. Yep. And then I think it was about four or five years later, Nanna and the rest of the children came over, came over as well. Have you performed in the Maltese community? If I'm yes, not mistaken, I have. you have. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I have. Yes, I have. <laughs> yes, I have. Um, I do sing in Maltese. You do? Yes, I do. <laughs> uh, not as much as many, not as much as many Maltese people would like me mm -hmm. to. Uh, I do a good rendition of Viva Malta, <laughs> and that's pretty much it. Well, Stephen, you said you get to give a good rendition of um, Viva Malta. Now's your opportunity. <laughs> Come on. Well, we'll. <laughs> We'll do it at the next show. <laughs> Come on, a quick one. Viva, Viva Malta, Will Martin! <laughs> Maltese Down Under thanks the Malta Tourism Authority, Mayfield's Business Advisors, MPD Steak Kitchen, Maltese Pasitsi Bar and Restaurant, First National Balkan Associates, Maltese Original Pasitsi Company, Smartline and our bronze sponsors.